Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is wrestling <clears throat> sports entertainment royalty. They've actually been in the game so long, they were once professional wrestlers, now they're sports entertainers. Coming up on a 25-year anniversary with the WWE, 27 years in the wrestling business, they've held every single championship that you could think of in wrestling, they've been all around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, legends amongst men, the Hardy Boys! The Hardy Boys! Thank you very much for that rousing motivation. <laughs> it was nice. Uh, good, good morning, to everyone. Just you, a, another typical day on the road. I was about to say, you got in here. Uh, we got your coffee. We got you feeling good. You guys have been doing this sports entertainment wrestling lifestyle for a long ass time, and it's not an easy one. It's not an easy one. So, if you could explain to people what the last twenty four hours were for you guys here, twenty five years into this thing, I think that would be a great uh, explanation of the life that you guys have lived. Yeah, uh, if we go back 24 years ago, I mean, uh, 24 hours ago, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we go back 24 years ago, we'll never finish this. this show. <laughs> uh, but if we go back 24 hours ago, uh, it started, we got up, went to the gym, okay, uh, came back, cleaned up, uh, went and had a, a nice little lunch at a, a sushi place yesterday. We made a drive over to Rockford, Illinois, uh, Illinois from Peoria. We uh, ended up doing a live event last night in Rockford, and after we wrestled in a triple threat match, and like I said, we've been doing this for 27 years, so you know we're beat up every match we feel. And then uh, we got in the car, and we drove uh, four hours and change here to Indianapolis, and then we also lost an hour, so we went from Central Time Zone to East Easter. Coast Time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, we got in, and by the time I took my bath of rejuvenation last night, where I soaked the old vessel for a few minutes, <laughs> and, uh, and, and get, get ready to crash and uh, and get up again, it was a little after four. You know, and then, oh, we, then, we were, then we were up a little after eight today. So, so, so sorry that th you had to come here. I would like to let you know that. I would like to let you know that I am not happy about what you had to do this morning. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, that was very nice of you. Yeah, life's too short, man. Get it. <laughs> hey, wow. great. Now let's, that goes over to you. Life's too short. Uh, Mr. Jeff Hardy, you are known as being a um, lunatic when it comes to what you're willing to do with your body and things like that. I watched a documentary whenever you guys came back to the WWE. I believe it was a WrestleMania, huge pop. You were a lot of things happening. But in there, they were talking about whether or not you have fear or not of anything. You've been known to jump off of things that are, I mean, uh, asinine high. Like, um, uh, I don't. Do you know the the tallest thing you've you've hopped uh, off of? Yeah, the, the swanton to Randy Orton was thirty three feet. Oh, <laughs> <Jeez>. Wow, <laughs> Jesus. It's three stories. That, that, three that, story that's story. not like a, that's not a work number. You know, that, that's probably the commentator would probably say it's at least fifty feet. <laughs> yeah, fella, it was legit. <laughs> you know, or like Seamus would say, it's fifty feet, fella. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was legit thirty three feet. We know, were walking into the building at uh, Rockford yesterday, and a bunch of fans were out there when we went through and. Uh, one guy said, there's the lunatic fringe. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not, I'm not Dean, I'm Jeff. <laughs> uh, but life's too short it is what your brother just said there. I'd assume this is something that you guys live by. But whenever you're doing these death-defying stunts, is there any thought or anything? Or is it just like, yo, let's just own this moment right now? I think my, uh, my high spots come from my background in motocross, you know, because mm -hmm. I was a big motocross guy growing up. I wanted to be a pro. Uh, but, you know, it costs money to race, so wrestling worked out a lot better. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just building my own jumps back in the day and trying to conquer them is the same thing I kind of do in those TLC matches and all that stuff. It's insane. It is absolutely insane. I mean, we got a trampoline out here strictly so uh, we can do some swanton bombs onto them and have you judge us. And I was standing up on the mezzanine, which is probably, what, 15 feet above that trampoline? Yeah, yeah. maybe. Not even. Probably 10 feet above yeah, that thing? Yeah. And I was, the butt was popping. <laughs> I don't understand how you guys do it. Was that the TLC matches? Those are the ones that uh, you guys recall the most in your career? Or what is like the most memorable moment of the Hardy Boys, you think? I mean, those matches definitely stand out. And, and that's when we were both all in. And even thinking back, like, young and healthy. And, and really, we were up for doing anything. Like, probably more than anybody else. Any so they come matches. up to you, they're like, yeah, you want to do this? And you guys are like, yeah, let's do it. But yeah, yeah, but I mean, we would also be say, well, what if we do this? And we jump off this ladder that's balanced on this balcony. And then we go through these three tables. And like, whoa, 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 let's back off a little bit. You know, <laughs> you know they would have to pull us back on things, even back in those days. And especially him. I mean, like, l l literally, no fear. Like, on, on his end and still I'm still blown away that you know every night now on a live event he'll go up and do a whisper in the wind or a swanton and just the way that his body the endurance like it, it makes me think he's indestructible in many ways and fear is I've always said this fear is part of the fun as far as you know when it works out it's great 
But when you don't make it, it's, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that adrenaline rush comes from the fear. You know? uh, 25 years into this thing. How many more years we got? We going for another 25, boys? Is that mm-hmm. the thought? Uh, well, uh, according to uh, the guy that was at the gym last night, he said that I've been doing this for 50. <laughs> We've been entertaining him for 50, so maybe he was from the future. <laughs> so, so maybe we do have 24, 25 more years in front of us. Uh, I, I don't know. That's uh, one of those things for sure. It's just kind of we kind of go by feeling. Like uh, I had a uh, three and a half, almost four months off just recently, and it was nice. I was able to like train and get into a regular routine and spend a lot of time with my kids. I have two young boys. So it, it, that really recharged me. And I, I think if, if I kind of have those moments of uh, being recharged and let my body heal and, and kind of get healthy again, I think I have a, so a little more fuel left in the tank, you know, personally. Jeff, yeah. you, you just got back off an injury as well, I believe. I yeah, know. I was out for, I made it, uh, we came back at WrestleMania 33, and I made it six months. And just one night, man, my shoulder had been bugging me for like two months. And uh, one night, I just like this uppercut, and it's pop, like a loud pop, and I thought it was dislocated. But yeah, my rotator cuff tore, and so I was out for exactly six months. Mm. So now I got a year and a half left now after this year's WrestleMania. So uh, you know, I just I don't think I can do it four days a week after that contract expires. But you know, just a limited schedule. I think I can. Are you guys doing four days a week right now? Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? How? How? Because I, I told you guys this whenever you walked in. The Roadhawks and I, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. me, Nick, Connor, Foxy back there, we did Fast Lane, which was in Cleveland, and then we did Cleveland to Pittsburgh, and then from Pittsburgh, I flew to Orlando and did Disney World, which I don't know if you've ever done. It's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real nightmare. <laughs> but I my body almost crashed after that. You guys have been doing f- this for, Do you have you ever put a number on how many shows you guys have done in your career? Oh God! Uh, Matches or anything like that? Uh, it, it, there's a bunch. I don't know. I mean, we could probably do some sort of math and, <laughs> and round it off or whatever. But like, I mean, that's one thing about this the schedule. I mean, there there are times where it was grueling. I mean, looking back to like last April, I know I was I was on the road for almost a month straight at one point when we were doing this. You know, we had a Jesus. a deal where uh, we went to. Uh, South Africa. We we started here in the U.S. Did a couple shows. We did TV. We flew down to South Africa. Did a week there. Flew all the way back to uh, flew all the way back to to St. Louis to do TV, and then got on a plane, and then went to Saudi Arabia, <laughs> and was there for a week. <laughs> and, By the way, you guys made it out of that that country. Good, good. Yeah, it's, we're here. <laughs> we're here. And, and then uh, and then we literally went home for a couple days, uh, Canada, and then over to Europe for two weeks. I mean, I was literally, literally almost gone for that full month. I was like, man, this was this was intense. This was the dream, though. Everybody knows that the yeah. Hardy Boys, this has been the dream since you were kids, and you've lived it beyond anybody's expectations. I'd assume yours as well. But whenever you guys were wrestling on trampolines at in the or at the compound or whatever was happening growing up, is this how you envisioned it? Is this how you saw the Hardy Boys going? Uh, I, I think so. Uh, pretty much. Uh, my, my daughter, actually, last week, we have a trampoline. I tried to put the uh, netting up around it, but I'm not smart enough. I didn't. I didn't hey, it took <laughs> seven guys yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I could not figure it out. But anyway, she asked me last week, uh, do you think we can build a ring uh, around it like you, you and uh, Matt had when you were kids? I said, hell yeah, we can. <laughs> we will. We're going to do that uh, soon. But yeah, I mean, like back during that Attitude Era, for example, it was wild. I mean, we were just wide open. It was sold out shows all the time. It just felt like we were never home but uh yeah i think we always envisioned it like this i mean yeah i mean i, I definitely we grew up as we were both big baseball fans we were both pretty good at baseball you know and we played like into our teen years and stuff but once we saw wrestling on tv and became WWE addicts like oh my god this is what we got to do this is the coolest thing ever because these guys were like living breathing superheroes and they're real you know like we loved comic books but these guys like almost guys that have superpowers and they really go out and they do this and they entertain people and we just wanted to be the WWE world tag team champions one time so anything past that was extra credit so we we achieved a lot of extra credit as, as that goes <laughs> I a lot <laughs> but uh but 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 yeah man still I, I think to this day like you know there's obviously the the real life issue of like you know we both have kids and families and we like being at home and having that time but still like this is was our dream and we love doing it and we're very lucky you know so many people in life don't get to do what they're passionate about and something they love so we get to do it day in and day out are you guys the og you guys are the ogs now do you take that into something that like is very important to you like teaching the younger uh generation of sports entertainers like how to do it right and shit like that 
I'm not a teacher at all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me questions. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll compliment. That's about all I do. <laughs> that was great. What should, can I do anything different? Nope. Keep doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, on the other hand, he's, that, he's the that, he's the leader. That, that was probably that's probably more my role. You know, yeah. like I, I I do the the talking, and he's the he's the big star. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, I do. I, I like if there's little things I can do to to help guys or give them info that might help them you know kind of uh advance in in what they're doing in the ring but also too i think just like as far as like dealing and and being okay with the lifestyle i think i'm very you know I, i'm beneficial in in that capacity you know because we've lived through everything good bad you know and uh, and, 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 and we, we totally know the way the whole deal works and i'm very good at being focused in reality and like i can tell someone like if they're having an issue or problem like this is the reality of the situation so this is just what you need to do you know, CTFO, shield the out. There you go. <laughs> PG era, bro. <laughs> don't don't do it. And who are some young superstars though that you guys like see and you're like, you know what? We respect the way they operate, or like a young tag team, or maybe even uh, solo uh, superstars. Anything like that? I'm blown away right now by uh, Mustafa Ali. That that guy. Wow. Hey, he got his ass kicked over there at Fastlane too. He came into the watch yeah. along. It was yeah. all banged up. But his his story is incredible right now. Yeah, and that's when they did the upside down knee. Uh, he went for the deal, right? Yeah. Hey, that was amazing. And that 450 on the apron. I mean, holy. I don't know how he does. That has to hurt, all right? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People thought I was crazy. I, I uh, missed a Swanton. Mm -hmm. uh, Shinsuke was on the apron at SummerSlam last last year, and uh, people thought I was crazy for that. I was going, this guy just did a 450 on the apron. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> just, uh, what a impact! I mean, Jesus. I mean, that apron is. I mean, it's so hard and so, it's like concrete, and then too, there's just like such a little area for you to like land on, you know, correctly. It's like such a tricky thing that became like a cool deal to do stuff on the apron oh do it on the apron it's different no one does it people ever do it just do it in the middle of the ring brother <laughs> <laughs> I see you guys that's my motto power bombed on that apron now and it's I'm, like that's a new thing now and it looks it's yeah, insane yeah my ass is too old to be doing stuff on the apron <laughs> <laughs> hey you used to fly around too that elbow drop you used to do that I don't know if you still do is that still in the repertoire once in a while yeah I do, I do stuff once in a while I uh I did that leg drop for a long, long time, and that, that really, like, especially the old WWE rings were set up for, like, 350, 400-pound monsters back in the day. And, like, when we first started, and I'm sure it contributed to Shawn Michaels' back injury, you know, initially, because those rings were, like, concrete. They had very little give. Uh, and they weren't meant for smaller guys. They weren't bumping rings, so to say. So, like, uh, when we first started, you know, every night, you know, we were taking all these crazy bumps. But, you know, our finish on house shows, we do ten, 10 nights on, four nights off, was a leg drop splash off the top rope on our opponent. And that, that, like, my hips and lower back and stuff, that became an issue, like, later from dropping that leg night after night after night after night. And then eventually it dropped down to the second rope, you know. And then, like, after the second rope, it started being, ho, oh, and they elbowed it back. <laughs> <and> back. <laughs> Brother with with it. With Age comes evolution, <laughs> and also intelligence. I like being able to walk in the morning. <laughs> do you do you watch what has happened to wrestlers before your time, and maybe even at the beginning of your time, and the way their body has reacted over age? Do you guys do the yoga? Every it seems as if DDP has got everybody doing the yoga. But do you guys do yoga or anything like that? What is the body regimen to keep it all intact? Because I don't want to say you guys are young, but you're not old. Mm -hmm. But 25 years in something is a long-ass time yeah. to be doing something. Yeah. You've got to take care of your body, especially whenever it's your – I mean, it's your weapon, basically. It's everything. I just uh, – when I first got uh, DDP's yoga deal, like I, well, I, tried, I did it good for about two weeks or something. But it takes a lot of discipline to make yourself do that all the time. But I – I pretty much uh, like pick my favorite exercises from like his routine, and I do them every morning. So it's definitely helped. I mean, along the way. Really? So you do yeah. you do do the yoga? Yeah. What are you not, supposed not to say of instead of me saying do do? Like when you <laughs> you're, you're, do you're a yogi. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like whatever. I, so you do do like is there you another is there a yoga. word better? You do there? the yoga. You, you do, do the yoga. yoga. I feel like I just sound like an imbecile when I say that. Like, <laughs> oh, you do 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 do. It's on me. I'd maybe slide utilize in there. Oh, so you, oh, you, you hey, do utilize. utilize the yoga. Broken oh. Matt, broken Matt Hardy. By the way, your diction is next level. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was unbelievable. I didn't see it whenever you were doing it at a previous place, mm -hmm. not to be mentioned. But whenever it came up, actually, I don't even know if that's part. Uh, 
if I should have said that. But whenever you brought it into the WWE, I was kind of taken back by it at first. But then when I, once I started listening to the words that were coming out of your mouth, I was like, this dude must just read dictionary or every, every fucking night. It was <laughs> some very impressive uh, mental gymkhana by your part. I want to let you know that. It was very impressive. No, thank you. I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan, of, uh, fan of words, especially adjectives. Uh, you know, I love adjectives. Couldn't even guess They're what They're my favorite. <laughs> Couldn't even guess what an adjective is. Describing words. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole point of the thing, like when I started doing the the whole broken mat gig was like uh i wanted to do things where the the kind of the new generation of fans that are like the smarter fans the more you know the the fans who are more aware of what's going on you know like uh, on, on a multi-level uh scenario like so they would you know i would say things insider terminology or insider jokes and i would kind of wink at the audience so they would get what's going on and then for the casual fans who didn't understand my reference or whatever the insider joke is that I'm making I would say stuff so outrageous and over the top that they would at least think it was funny mm -hmm. and it was like kids really dug it more than anything else you know it was a great kids act for sure I enjoyed it yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, the teeth clump too I mean mm -hmm. I, I think that's the most aggressive thing you do because it didn't give a moment one of them things can chip you know what I mean? No, for sure. Yeah. And, and like, uh, when I was, uh, right, right before I came here, like there was a point where I would make comebacks as a, as a, as a baby face, as a good guy. And I would like just bite every part of my opponent's body and it would get like a bigger reaction than these guys having to bump. So everybody wanted to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, you can just bite me and I don't have to fall down time after time after time. You know? So, so that, that, that worked, man. That was good stuff. Uh, what's on the horizon for the Hardy boys? You guys were solo competitors. Oh, I guess you were hurt. That's why you went solo there for a little bit. You guys going to be a tag team for the foreseeable future? I think yeah, we got a good little uh, run in us. Uh, but yeah, when I was out with the went out with that shoulder surgery, uh, Matt, you know, became woken and uh, <laughs> everything changed. Uh, so yeah, it's it's cool to be back. I miss doing the brother Nero, and and I love that broken universe stuff. Always will because last night, every night mm -hmm. since I, Matt's uh, I had that surgery, I came back and went to SmackDown, all this and that. You can always get them deleting, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a powerful thing. Yeah, you do, you bust that, you do, you utilize. I, I do, yeah. do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, I do, do, delete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a powerful thing. Even when we came back at Mania, we could hear it in the distance, like people chanting just in case it might be the Hardy Boys, you know, they were doing that. That's a powerful movement. How did that come about, the delete taunt? Uh, w once again, I was trying to, uh, whenever I was in the, in the feud with him that we had and we built to this final deletion match, I was trying to think of a word I could use that would be different and new and fresh besides like beat, I'm going to beat my opponent or I'm going to beat my brother. Or, I'm going to like end my brother. And, and I was like, I don't know. You know, it's broken mat kind of can do stuff kind of off the wall, whatever. What about delete? And that's kind of like a cool word, word that people use on social media now, you know, cause they use it all the time. And then like, and I'll even do a sign with it. That's like the swipe, like everybody does on the phone who mm -hmm. doesn't do that mm -hmm. on the smart device. You know? Oh, see, I was thinking, cause it's every once in a while you guys, you go from chest. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that, that's where. I mean, I, I would see him when, whenever I was at home, kind of uh, doing my routine, and, and he certainly would utilize my delete. <laughs> but that's all right, you know. He had right to it. Like uh, the the whole broken mat thing wouldn't have worked if he hadn't been so committed to his role as brother Nero and me. Like you know, once again being upset, he was a, a, a spot monkey, <laughs> you know, because he had a terrible addiction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get to a point where I, you know, I literally wouldn't let him jump off the ropes. And I was like, and the funny thing is that was part of the story, but I was like, seriously, man, like you're going to kill yourself. Like, <laughs> Slow down. You're doing too much. Like the people just want to see Jeff Hardy. You don't have to do a swanton, whisper in the wind and, and sacrifice yourself to the floor every single night, you know? So <laughs> we'll do this whole gimmick. I'll make you brother Nero. Like I kind of am in control of you. And then like, you just wrestle. Okay. Right. Just punch me, okay? <laughs> I want you to heal up, okay? Yeah, that you, that you, was the whole point behind that. You are family there, and he he says fear is a part of it or whatever. Is it tough for you to watch whenever he's about to do something that's just ludicrous? Is it is or what is it? Uh, no, I mean I get it, and I, I, I get what makes him. And, and this is something that I say to wrestling fans. I mean, like J Jeff is like got the kind as hard if anybody you ever meet and he really feels like he owes it to wrestling fans because once again we're two kids that grew up in the middle of nowhere north carolina in cameron a very very small country town and he feels like he owes it to them to give him everything he has when he goes out and and that's a, a great mentality and attitude to have but also too there's also like the reality of like taking care of your body especially as you get older you know so like i, I get it when he does stuff and 
sometimes uh so you feel like you're letting down the audience there if you don't do something just absolutely absurd i, I mean i could see you being trapped by that fear of letting people down not not really not not so much but like that's one thing with i think my deal now uh, more than ever is the paint the face paint uh because i grew up loving the ultimate warrior the road warriors you know anybody that painted their face wasn't sure why but i just loved i guess the artistic you know thing that's inside me but uh Last night, for example, I didn't feel like painting my face, but I was like, man, I, I know there's some kid out there that's waiting to see this, so especially with the eyes closed and the zombie walk and all that, so I'm, I'm going to do it. So, I, I, gosh, for the last, I think I'm now on my Instagram, there's a little over 100 uh, shows that I've painted my face you know, every night, so I've kept it rolling, it's, but it's so much extra work. But that's one thing I think I, I can do now instead of you know, doing a swan hunt every night. So... <laughs> By the way, Smart. great move. Yeah. <laughs> great move. So you, you have to prepare during your day time to paint your face. Has there ever been a time where it's been close? Oh, for sure, man. Like when I... Uh, <laughs> like just throw <laughs> something together? the worst look ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the, uh, a few weeks ago, I was moved to first from fourth or whatever. So I was in an ex extreme rush and I was doing the deal where I... I paint a face on my face. It's a little weird, obsolete yeah, man, you know, on my face. And uh, so, yeah, it was just a rush job. But I, I've always uh, been able to make it make it happen. So, yeah, luckily I, it has. Every time I see you come out, I'm always like, yeah, I wonder how long that took. And I wonder <laughs> if there was a moment of like, oh, shit, only going to paint half the face tonight. <laughs> only going to paint <laughs> half. Sure, many times. <laughs> yeah, like a full-on fear panic mode. I, 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 it's so impressive when he does that. Like, and and I'm watching him, and he does it so quickly, and he's just so artistic. Like, I know if I tried that, like I would paint my face, and I would come out, and he would go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, you know, they'd be like, "Oh, bless his heart." Yeah. He tried. He tried. Oh, he tried. That oh, man. He's a sweet little man. <laughs> uh, so brainstorming, like whenever you came up with broken mat and the delete and stuff like that, is that a real session, or do you do it like when you're on the road, or is there like, do you have people helping you out, or is it just uh, you two kind of coming together uh, for like? ideas and stories and stuff like that yeah i mean that that was pretty much on me whenever you know whenever that came to be where i was working that's pretty much where uh, i, I kind of got my say so and i ended up ha being at a point where i had kind of like how do you pitch at the events i assume you have to pitch at the events well that, no, well what happened when whenever we're here and i'm doing the woken thing we come back initially and we kind of start as the hardy boys and then jeff gets hurt and he's gone i just walk into tv one day and they go oh my god you, you got to go in events. You've got to explain to him the whole what this broken Matt Hardy means and like what what he does and what motivates him and how he came to be. And I had a one on one conversation with the Vince for thirty minutes explaining <laughs> broken Matt Hardy and how it came to be. It's one of the most entertaining <laughs> conversations of my life. I'm sure. thinking of it right now. Yeah, <laughs> to Vince Mc and he obviously was all in because it seemed as if it just it started coming in full bore. You're on every show doing it. I assume is that the case. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I think it was a little, as far as like kind of trying to play to, to two masters, like I, I don't know if he fully kind of comprehended all that in some ways because he, he's very much like, you know, he does like comic book characters or superheroes and w when you're like a gimmick character and that's what he promotes and does, you know, like in, in wrestling has just changed so much as time goes on. But like, it was so fun there. I said, I said, so see, this is the deal. See, like now once I became broken and I utilized more of my mind, this is what I'm telling Vince in this meeting. I said, I can utilize more of my mind where the human being can utilize X, per amount, uh, X uh, percent amount of their mind. Now I can do like five times that. So I'm aware of where my soul, where my essence has been in all these other bodies. So like I've been able to track it for over 2000 years. And now my soul just happens to be inside the body of the man that is a wrestler named Matt Hardy. And my soul's name is Zenith. That is my essence. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish I wish you would have just got drug tested like the next day. <laughs> oh, give, give me the drug test. I'll take them all. The NFL. That would have happened in the NFL if I walk into Commissioner Goodell. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I would have got drug tested the next day. What a moment. Uh, well, got, well, when I, I said, well, when I was away, I watched a lot of TV. I got into a lot of good TV shows. You know, <laughs> I started watching True Blood, and I saw these vampires oh, yeah. that had pieces hey. throughout time. I said that was kind of my inspiration for this. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I wanted to ask Jeff because um, you were talking about the arts, and then I was reading about you earlier, and it said you do sculpture as well. And I wanted to ask, like, are you doing ice sculptures? What type of sculpture oh. are you working with? No, years ago, I don't do them anymore. But years ago, I used to take uh, like plastic jugs and bottles and like duct tape them uh -huh. up, and like to like this. Uh, the, I made a huge thing. I made a bamboo skeleton, and then just built this big man around it, and mm -hmm. I called him uh, Niromi. 
and actually had a uh, water name. hose that went up his leg, and he, he I could actually turn the water <laughs> on it. He would shoot water out of his oh. ass. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the wildest thing. And this is years ago, but yeah, that just just took so much time and yeah, so much yeah. patience. But yeah, back in the day, the aluminumies I used to used to make <laughs> the aluminumies. You paint, you paint like for real, like uh, I do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, when I have time on canvas. You Who's know, your favorite painter of all time? Of all time, yeah. probably M. C. Escher. Bob Ross, yeah. probably the writer. Bob Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna break, I'll break out a little Jeff Ross later. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> you guys got anything for him? I got something for yeah, you. Yeah, here we go. Um, professionally, you've been linked for your 27 years. Has there been any time in your career where you guys just did not want to talk to one another? You had beefs, and even though professionally you had to make it look like you were close and, and brothers, but actually had some beef that you guys were like, I ain't talking to him. He ain't talking to me. That happens with me and my brother. Yeah, all the time. He works here. <laughs> I keep him in his corner, though. <laughs> I don't think so. It's pretty, uh, like, in tune, I believe. Yeah, it's yeah. No, we, we, we've we never had that point, like, where we've been at each other's throats. You know, we've had, uh, I guess, scenarios where we've had disagreements or we kind of see things in different lights. But, yeah, we've never had, like, a big blowout. And usually we're really easygoing and get along great together. So, How about you guys individually in school? Like, if a teacher, when you're in high school, if a teacher described you both individually, what would they say about you? Me, kind of least likely to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> in anything. Kid's got a lot of quitting. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, I was more the the brain guy. Once again, like it's funny, Jr. would make that analogy a lot. Like you know, he'd say, "Well, you know, Jeff Hardy's the sizzle, Matt Hardy's the steak." <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I was I was pretty good, a stronger math guy, stronger math guy than than verbal in, in yeah. English. But I, I did, did, did pretty pretty good in school. We, yeah. we love good math joke yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> who got you guys in? Who who are some uh, older people that kind of helped you get? Not got you in, but helped you whenever you were younger and stuff like that. I got to give it up to the Italian stallion and, and uh, George South. They broke us in back in '94, uh, being job guys. Yeah, that's when we first got an opportunity. Well, you know, like I said, we'd started in '92. We we it's a very weird story. Like obviously, we had this trampoline in our backyard for a couple of years. You know, like '89, '90, and we're boing, 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 yep. boing. You know, re- wrestling around. You know, emulating what we saw on TV. And then we met a guy whose name was Kenneth Morgan, and he came up to us, and he'd met a friend of ours, Tracy Goodell, who was like six years older than me. He, How old are you guys at this time? 17, 18? Uh, Jeff was, uh, when we met like Kenneth 14, Morgan, probably. yeah, you yeah. were probably 14, 14, 14, maybe almost 15, and I, I was probably 16. So we, we'd met this guy, and he said, well, yeah, and he's very, very Southern dude. He's like, well, you know, I, I do a lot of stuff for my carne for the fairs. And he said, I've got this ring. It's going to be breakthrough. It's like half real wrestling ring. It's half trampoline. I think you boys would be great for it if you want to come do some shows. You know, maybe you can make you a few bot, a few dollars. So then we did some shows with him at a fair. And then he realized, like, oh, well, you can't get rich off this wrestling stuff doing shows at the fair or whatever. <laughs> so we ended up actually buying that ring. Like, I worked at a car wash, That's and Jeff awesome. did landscaping. Like, And we, we bought that ring. We converted it to a solid hard ring, and then we kind of started training ourselves. And then a guy that we'd met said, oh, you should come with us to PWF. And it was an independent promotion in North Carolina, ran by the Italian San and George South. And I'm like, okay, brothers, well, you know, if you guys just do all our shows for free, you know, we, we do two or three nights a week. We'll take you to WWE, and we'll give you a chance to wrestle the, the real big superstars. And then May of 1994... We both went. I was 18. Jeff was 16. And Jeez. Stallion <laughs> made him lie about his age. He had to move up his birthday two years later. <laughs> it's time of the release for him. And, uh, and we, we both wrestled. Like, I wrestled on live TV against Nikolai Volkov, 18. And Jeff was wow. 16 years old. That's wrestled against serious. Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. Wow. He's a little pale hey, white yo. kid out there. <laughs> That's yeah. absurd. Razor Ramon just beating the hell out of a 16-year-old on a TV? Ju- a junior yeah. in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that hard, Bad guy. <laughs> that hard-ass ring. My little 185-pound body didn't make it but you know, so it was, it was I went back to school and said, hey, watch Monday night. I'm going to be <laughs> <laughs> He's likely yeah. to succeed my ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey <laughs> teacher lady, you on TV? <laughs> and what's so funny is, like, they we had just got, like, amateur wrestling at our high school. Like, our high school was small, and I didn't get to do it, like, you know, while, while I was there. We had it the year after I graduated. And then Jeff was uh, uh, doing amateur wrestling, and he was good at it. And then they told him, said, well, <laughs> Coach, what did they do? He said, I don't yeah, know, I, since actually, you're doing this professional wrestling, I might be a conflict since you're getting paid. I yeah. think we're going to have to kick you off the team. <laughs> there was a big yeah, scandal was, uh, at Union Pines <laughs> High School in the middle of the country. Because you got paid twenty five bucks to right, yeah, get exactly. smashed on TV. Yeah, my sophomore year, I think I finished third in the state, so I did good, very well for my yeah. first year ever wrestling. And then 
uh, by the time my junior year rolled around, we'd already started doing the, the going to the Fed, you know, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, when I came back after the that, that tape, yeah, that's what they used to call it. But that's what any, any wrestler still guys joke about all the time. Go, hey, hey, brother, you, you guys working for the Fed now? Or, or they go, hey, brother, you guys working for New York? Oh yeah, is you guys working for the E? You know, like, there's all these slangs and still any guys. Some indie guys that are holding on to the you know the '80s territory days love to use that that terminology. But when the uh, athletic director found out about me being on TV as a pro wrestler, he he pulled me aside one day and said, "You don't like this?" He said, "He said, are you making money for wrestling?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, they pay us a little bit." He said, "Well, that you, you can't wrestle here. That'd be like you being in the NFL and coming back." <laughs> 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 I, I, think it's, I think it's a little different. <laughs> did you see my match, athletic director? Did you? Did you see? My match? <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, it's amazing. Wild journey you guys have been on, and it's been awesome to kind of watch you guys evolve and change. And through honestly, through the ebbs and flows of the whole thing, it's been really cool as a fan to watch the Hardy Boys kind of evolve and. Uh, I think I speak for everybody and say thank you guys for your service. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, your bodies, man. your bodies have been just fucking ragdolled for our <laughs> entertainment for years, and I'm very thankful for it. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that. Oh. Honestly, oh, well, well, thank you. And and once again, like you know, we're we're blessed, man. We're living the dream. This is what we always wanted to do, and it's provided us a, a great life. So you know, with no complaints here. And we were talking earlier. Uh, we might be going to SmackDown this evening. If you don't go off a 33-foot high thing, we're all going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let you down, guys. <laughs> don't do it. Way. Don't do it. What I if, would feel so bad. What if we start <laughs> booing him? Like, Get the fuck down! <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we're here for, Jeff! Uh, just punch somebody. Just punch yeah. somebody. Just paint your face. Uh, yeah. Just paint your face. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, legends in the wrestling world, the Hardy Boys. Thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs>